What up, dogs? Welcome back. Uh, I mean, welcome. I guess you don't have anything to return to because this is a one-time thing. Oh, hi. I'm doing a request of from one of you guys, dogs, whatever. Uh, sorry. Um, what the fuck? Is that hairs in my microphone? That's kind of ting tickling my mouth. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try not to bother with that. Anyways, this is a tutorial on how to play at war slash after wind. Uh, not necessarily in, 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 like a pro, but like a me, like a derp. Uh, so, um, so, yeah. You, you should probably be quite familiar with what the fuck is going on here. This is just, you know, here you pick your games, or you can make your own game, and you can see who the fuck is in the lobby waiting for a game, or just derping. Um, there's some tabs here, there's maps, yeah, you can use the these maps for, uh, like, games, you can make your own games using these maps, if you so desire. Uh, what the fuck is here? Oh, upgrades. Yeah, uh, you should probably know uh, by now that you have these SP points. I can't remember what that what the S stands stands for, but the P is points. And you have a certain amount of points available to you, and you can use them to buy shit, which is quite fucking nice. I love buying shit. You can buy all kinds of shit from here, like strategies and all that. And it's pretty damn nice. These you can't buy. These you cannot. I'm sorry. Uh, wait, the general is premium now? Okay. Good to know. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of shit over here. That you can buy with your S points like strategies and additional capacity for shit and air support uh, yeah those are quite useful but for example right now I think I'm gonna go buy the gear level of it's quite a good strategy I find uh, I'll talk about that later in strategies in general also master of stealth would be a good one um, Yeah, buy that please. Thank you. Thank you. Now, don't think that's really useful. It's probably to use proto points, which are real not money. Oh well. What the fuck? Why the fuck would you do that? That that that, that that's horrible. That is horrible. Horrible. Anyways, fuck that. Stats and medals, I have all kinds of achievements here and stats and all that because I've been playing this game for so fucking long and I have no life. I can log out but that will kind of defeat the purpose. I'm already in full screen, my language is fine. So yeah, let's get into a game. Now for the purpose of this video I'm not gonna go into an actual game because I've already seen those and there's probably more of them coming soon enough. Because I actually recently discovered that there's quite a few people from like the EU3 community, you know, like like Kyle and B Boy and all that kinds of people, and even Liga uh, that like to play this game. Uh, so I'm probably gonna do that at one point or another. But for now, I'm gonna create my own game, and it annoys me like hell that it's public. So. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that and quickly before anyone starts and joins, I'm gonna start the game. Alright. Now, first phase, and before I do anything I'm gonna go put my sweet tunes on, because I love the music in this game so much. Oh. <laughs> Anyhow, 
Um, yeah, it's pretty good. So now, first thing you do, like when you start the game, is based on the settings of the creator of the game, you have a certain amount of money, and you use that money to buy a a country to make it your own country. You can go for Trinidad and Tobago, but it's not generally a good decision to make. Uh, the way I prefer, I, like the way I think it's supposed to be done, and the way I do it. Is that I look at one country's like income base, like you can see here, this country has a uh, like Kazakhstan gains 65 monies from their cities, like their three cities I think, and they also gain a certain amount of money from controlling all their cities, you know, because they start out with all of those cities. And if you were to like conquer another country, and uh, you will you will also gain a certain amount of money bonus for controlling every single one of that country's cities. Uh, however, however many there are, like for example, uh, Russia Volga owns four cities, and you know you, you gain like bonus forty one just from controlling them all. And, like, of course, if you own like these three, you would gain a steady amount of income, like 100 something, 158. But if you own them all, you would gain the bonus income from Ufa, which is 46, plus the 41 from owning them all. So, yeah, that's quite nice to own all the cities and whatever you conquer. Uh. Now. Uh. I have 10k, and there's quite a few good options for 10k. There's obviously my favorite, which is South Korea. Uh, uh, in Europe games, there's also like quite a good, uh, quite a few good ones like Great Britain, France, Spain, Germany. Sometimes my eh, Italy, but not generally that good of a choice. But, you know, it doesn't really matter for this particular video, so I'm just gonna go with my own country. Fuck it. Bromania. The country of bros. Right. Here we go. Uh, victory conditions are to hold one's capital and, uh, like, capture it and hold it for two turns. And, uh, as you can see, uh, we have a couple of cities. Uh, Bucharest. Bucharest and Cluj okay and what we can do is um, we obviously lost some money from buying our country and we're left with in this case 8k we also have a steady growth um, like a steady income from our two cities and we have to pay maintenance to our units which is currently 6 infantry here and 1 infantry here for a total of 7 infantry you can actually see it over here in the finances tab, like, yeah, countries, we only own Romania right now, but we own 100% of it, so we get plus 146, and the troop expenses right now is for 7 infantry, which is 49, um, yeah, 7 monies per infantry times 7 is 49, so overall we're getting 97 every turn. Uh, there's obviously the players list, the units, you can actually look at this, uh, you know, you can also see like the perks I get from Sky Menace, uh, yeah, or the book, the, the nerfs, cause you know, that's kind of about the point of Sky Menace, is, uh, to like, bo uh, boost some units and nerf the others, but I'll talk about that later. Oh, and also, I didn't mention that, but when you start the game, you also get to pick your strategy. And you can actually do that outside of the game, like there's a thing, yeah, there's strategy. Uh, not sure you can see it now. But, uh, basically this is, this is what strategies are. They're sort of like, you mostly buffs to certain units, but sometimes they're nerfs. Uh, for example, my strategy right now is Sky Menace. May not be the best, but it's my strategy. Basically, what that means is that my main attack unit now is bombers, and that it makes them a lot cheaper um, and more powerful and all that. Buffs them a whole lot. 
Also, it means that my air transports are quite a bit cheaper and they hold more units, I think. Um, yeah, that, that is quite a useful strategy, I find, because with this strategy, you know, since you're based on bombers and airplanes, you have quite a big mobility. Uh, very useful for things like marching between Europe and Asia, or more like flying. Um, other strategies, of course, strategies are depending on, um, i chosen depending on the situation. For example, Guerrilla Warfare, the one I bought a little while ago, uh, is very useful for things like warfare in the general African area, because these countries don't have, like, don't have that big of an income, like the biggest one is probably South Africa or maybe Egypt. Uh, no, South Africa with like 200 something. Most of these are like poor crap, look at that. Yeah, so they don't go even, uh, they don't even go over 100. So much crap. So, uh, Guerrilla Warfare is really useful be because it makes militia uh, quite a bit more powerful. It gives them a bigger, like, uh, radius of movement and it makes them dirt cheap like they each cost one uh, like, I mean uh, they cost one to maintain and ten to produce so that is a very useful strategy for general African area combat now uh, there's also one that like lets you uh, just mass out infantry and gives them actually some good attack and also I think reduced cost. Uh, I think that's called perfect defense or something like that. They might have changed them, I don't know, but the way it looks is that they're pretty much the same. So yeah, that's another good one, but I don't really like it. I mean, I don't really play it that much. So yeah. Um, that is about the strategies. You can obviously hover over them and see what the fuck they do, each of them. But, um, uh, yeah, Th these are the units you can recruit in the game, uh, not sure you can unlock more of them, I'm pretty sure I unlocked every single one of them, there's obviously more, uh, uh, you can build, but you can build ships if you have a coastal province, I mean city like Varna for example, which we're gonna take over shortly, uh, but yeah, there's militia, uh, crappiest but cheapest. They have a really low uh, like movement radius, uh, pretty damn low attack and defense. But you know uh, they they obviously stack. So if you make a lot of them, uh, you're gonna be fine on that front. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that. About the militia, they're like pretty much the cannon fodder of your army. Uh, I don't really generally use them for like in my army, my movement, moving up, moving army. I usually just uh, leave them for defense of the city. Uh, infantry, also pretty damn cheap. Uh, mostly a defensive unit. Uh, I can't, I'm not sure if I can lower the volume of music thing. Uh, so I hope you can li uh, you can hear me quite well. I didn't really check the volumes. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, infantry is mostly a defensive unit, which, uh, you know, you're generally going to also use for defending your cities. You can sometimes use them for moving around and capturing shit with them, but without the certain strategy, it's not really worthwhile. Don't find. Um... Tanks, uh, tanks are like the, uh, generally uh, your mo uh, your most valuable uh, land unit, in disregarding strategies, uh, of course, which makes people like marines more useful. But yeah, generally tanks are really good land units for attack. Uh, obviously, uh, not very strong on the defensive. Uh, you know, it's quite expensive, I'd say. But certain strategies obviously reduce that. Now, everything depends on strategies. Strategies are meant to like buff and nerf certain units. Anyways, Marines are basically about the same units as tanks. 
difference being that Marines are slightly more expensive, and that expen uh, that slightly more expensivity uh, is not a word, but whatever. That slight bit of extra cost um, is from uh, the capability to um, what's it called to go in stealth mode. You know, you, you can't really see them in, uh, unless you're in a certain radius of them. What was that? I think, yeah, the detection range, as you can see. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, I'm not sure you can actually see it very well, but there's like certain circles around. And in, in this radius, you can see, uh, hang on. Uh, in the small circle radius, you can see air uh, stealthy units, and in the slightly bigger circle, you can see the land stealthy units. Uh, so obviously, land is mo um, quite a bit easier to detect. Um, yeah, outside that radius, if you don't have any units inside that radius, you are not gonna be able to see the marines. And they're usually used for like taking you by surprise. Quite obviously, that's the whole point of stealth. Um, certain strategies make them uh, a lot cheaper and stuff. Um, next up, um, anti-aircraft. Obviously, against air units, you use that as defensive unit. I don't think it can even move. Uh, bombers. They're generally like. Uh, an offensive, uh, or sometimes defensive actually, but mostly offensive um, long range units. Uh, normally, they, they are f uh, quite a lot expensive, uh, more expensive than tanks and marines and all that, but uh, obviously, Sky Menace makes them decently priced. And um, the, the main attribute, uh, the main, like, Advantage is the uh, really big, uh, what's it called, Ra um, range. No, the movement range. It's quite fucking big. I'm gonna make one to show you. Look, that's how far a, a bomber can move. And for the um, for the contrast, let me show you how far an infantryman can move. This far. That's quite a big difference. Uh, yeah, bombers are really effective for marching long distances. Like, say, if you're off, if you're in China, like I usually am with North, uh, with Korea, South Korea, that is, uh, and I want to like fight Europe. It's gonna take me a long as well to march my armies all the way over there, or even even worse if I want to attack America. It's gonna take a long as well. So that's why I normally go for. Uh, bombers. It's still gonna take ages, but mm, it's better. It's slightly better. Uh, what else? Uh, there's stealth planes, uh, which I used. Uh, obviously, they're like the stealth equivalent of marines. Uh, I mean, no, the air equivalent of marines. Also, stealth units. Uh, Quite useful, obviously, for certain strategies. I don't use them that much. I don't really like stealthy units. Um, I don't know. Sometimes they're useful, but I don't generally use them that much. And finally, there's the transport units, um, which I used for transporting uh, units on quite long distances. Pretty much the same as bombers, slightly smaller, I think. But yeah, that, that's the main purpose. Uh, now, um, besides these units right here, you can have um, you can have a general if you have a, if you buy uh, have something premium account. I don't know. Uh, yeah, technically you can have a general. You can have um, you can obviously have naval units like uh, submarines, which are basically stealthy. Uh, sea units. You can have like regular uh, naval units called battleships, which are just used to fight. And you can also have sea transports. Mostly don't bother with sea warfare that much, it's not really useful. Uh, 
Now, C transports are sometimes useful when you don't really want to waste money on air transport, and, you know. Uh, when you need to, fer to ferry a, uh, a bigger amount of troops. But other than that, other than that, it's not really much of a use to have C units. I find. Maybe there's some strategies. I don't know. There's strategies for every unit af after all. So every unit can be uh, useful in some way. Uh, now, the way the game works is obviously turn based strategy. Uh, so every turn, something happens. You move units, you attack shit. You basically attack. Uh, you attack shit when two uh, hostile units get together. Uh, and, uh, at the end of each turn, like, all battles happen, and all takeovers of cities happen. You can take over a city if you get, uh, if you get rid of all of its defenses, uh, and if you attack with at least one land unit. Like, for example, you're not gonna take over a city if you just, uh, bomb it to shreds. You're obviously gonna kill everyone there, and you can... I afterwards take it quite easily given that it's not reinforced, but still, it can't take. Now, as you can see, I attacked Varna with one unit of infantry. And infantry doesn't have that good of an attack, so the militia can quite easily win that battle. Unless I bring more reinforcements, like air support, in the form of bombers. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm hopefully, I'm probably gonna take over Varna. Uh, the next turn, and I'm also um, gonna make some bombers to um, attack this city over here in Bulgaria, Sofia, which is the capital. You can't do jack shit with cities if you don't control like, uh, the capital of their country. For example, Varna would, uh, is basically useless without Sofia, because you can't build troops there. It may give you income, but... Not really useful. Mm -hmm. Plus, generally, uh, the capital city of a country is the main source of income. So, what I did there is I uh, attacked both Varna and Sofia at the same time. And with quite good odds to take them over. Because, you know, militia suck. Uh, that, that's what you'll mostly find for defenses in non-player countries, you know, you'll mostly find militia, and in some richer nations, like in Germany, for example, you get to fight infantry. Uh, yeah, not much else, really. So, it's obviously quite easy to, uh, like, fight an AI nation compared to a, uh, player nation, just like in any game. Uh, what I did here around Bucharest is I set up a defense line. Uh, what that means is that, uh, when someone tries to attack my capital here in Bucharest, they're not gonna be able to because you can't pass with units through the defense line. And they need to kill the defense line, which is gonna give me one more turn to, um, uh, prepare and build up units and all that. Uh, quite quite useful the defense lines. And this is the most effe uh, um, effective one because this is a, a three-man defense line. You can make like four-man. Basically, the concept is not to allow people to pass through. They they can't pass through here. So it's pretty damn secure. This is the rest of mine. Now, this attack here ended up quite. Uh, I mean, let's see how it ended actually. Let's see the assault. Both assaults were successful. I lost my bombers here, I lost one bomber here, but I got both cities. So when I start the turn, as you can see, I now own Bulgaria entirely, and I gain 34 from Sofia and Varna, and I also own 7 from controlling their entirety. So that was quite useful. This attack of ours. Now, you know, obviously, uh, like with a snowball, the more I gain land, I'm going to be able to take more from the AI, and that's sort of the empire building mechanic of this game. Also, something I, worth mentioning, uh, you can see that there's a certain amount of units you can recruit in each city, and that wears out, uh, you know, as 
obviously as you recruit units. But it gets replenished every four turns. Uh, you see here, now we got to turn five, it's been four turns. We get a brand new set of units we can recruit. Uh, yeah. Also, the amount, uh, uh, the maximum amount, amount which gets replenished every four uh, every four turns, is based on basically the city's population and income and all that. So let's make more units. You know, farmers, quite obviously. So you know, you can just rinse and repeat the strategy, and you just take over cities. And Grow your empire and at some point fight people. It's not that complicated of a game if you know basic strategy me mechanics. Um, you know, it's all it's all quite simple. Quite simple of a pimple. Uh, is there anything else I can really show you? I think I covered pretty much everything. Like you just. Basic concept, you build units, you kill dudes, you grow your empire, you build more units and kill more dudes, and so on and so forth. Um, I guess I can, might as well show you the naval units now that I have a port. There's the destroyer's main, like, fighting uh, naval unit. Uh, there's submarines, stealthy fighting naval unit. And there's also the transport, the sea transport, which, as I said, useful for carrying a lot of troops around on the seas and for uh, like cheaper ways of transporting. Uh, what can I... Yeah, that's pretty much it for the game. Like, this is the game. Conquer shit, you grow your empire, you make, you make dudes who conquer more you. Uh, you'll see more of the game when I actually get to play it, but uh, which may be later on today. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that, that I might actually do. It sounds quite interesting. But until I do that, I hope this tutorial has been like self-explanatory enough, and you know, you kind of got the point of this game. So. Uh, Obviously, if you have questions, you can ask them in the comments, because I love answering your questions, guys. Heart. Uh, fuck hungry. Fuck you guys. Wow, that's quite good income, actually. Quite a lot better than Bulgaria, and even touching on mine. Anyways, not really, but still. Uh, yeah, this has been my tutorial on how to play Avatarin, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I quite I enjoyed it doing it quite a bit. So um, please ask your questions in the comments and you know generally be a good guy and don't do drugs because they're bad for your and everything. And until until my next video, which may or may not be of this game, um, yeah. Take care and have fun guys. Bye!